Hey, what's up everyone? My name is George and this is SAS Master. Today I want to show you a really cool WordPress plugin that's going to enable you to create your own store and actually have vendors selling for you. Now this might sound similar to, for example, Amazon, eBay, where they actually have vendors selling for them and they earn a commission from every single sale they make. So that's possible with WCFR from WC Lovers. So let's actually dive deep, deep into this one and I'm going to show you how to get started and set up WCFM in this video. So you're going to see how cool the store is and how flexible and the whole bunch of options that you can offer your vendors that's going to make it look really professional. Now this is the main site and if you guys want to grab the deal that's going on right now, the link will be in the description. The link is an affiliate link. If you guys buy through that link, it won't cost you a single cent more. And it helps me grab a commission to make these videos for you guys. All right, so this is the main site. And obviously you can see create a marketplace with WooCommerce. So you're using WordPress and WooCommerce. And what you're gonna see right here is that you can enable store like this one. Now I know this doesn't look nice. This is just an example site from them. And you could just, it just kind of shows you the power of WCFM, but it's not, it doesn't show you how nice you can actually make it. You can see the vendors that they actually have a rating. They have the badges right here. They got the stores, you can enable the maps for physical store, digital products. They can upload their own products really easily. And you're going to see that in a bit when I show you how to set up. So this is my test site. And one of the things that you're going to see right here is that the only thing I have done is install the WCFM plugins and WooCommerce. Aside from that, there's nothing else installed but the Divi theme that I'm using. But I'm going to show you how to get set up. So this is how you would get started. It's a super easy way to get started. And don't be worried because every single uh, setting on this is actually pretty easy. And if you have something missing that you don't set up at the beginning, everything's really easy to set up later. So you got the dashboard set up right here. And you got a WCFM full view. So it's going to be OK. Theme header. We're going to keep all this um, enabled. You got quick access off and floating button off. We're going to keep those like it is. We're going to we're not going to change that uh, the marketplace so the store Earl base. So, for example, this is a site that I'm on. Like I said, it's a test site and this is going to be the text right here. So, for example, if I select store, that's going to be, for example, my link slash store and then it's going to continue. Right. Each each, each individual vendor is going to have their own link after that. So maybe you want to put, for example, it's going to use stores. I'd rather use that than just store. Um, visible sold by yes we want to keep that for for example it's going to be sold by this store sold by template let's keep that on sold by position below at card a store name position at head header a store sidebar keep that on i'm going to show you where that is and you can disable it later if you want store sidebar position keep it at the left we can change it to the right if we want store related products as per WC default rule. So that means WooCommerce. So it's going to be by default from them or only same store products. Products per page. Um, we're going to keep that at 10 marketplace shipping. Um, if this is going to be physical stores that are going to be uh, selling, those are going to be vendors that are going to be physical. Then you can keep the shipping. In this case, I'm going to set up a store for digital products in this per for this purpose. And I'm going to disable um, shipping and the marketplace shipping by way. If you want to use the Google Maps API, that means that when a store adds their direction, their either yeah their address, it's going to show the pin with the Google Maps on it. If you don't enable this, that won't work. So if you plan to use that, set up the API. Let's continue. We got the commission set up. So in this case, commission for obviously the vendor, the people who are going to sell. If I change it to the admin, it's going to charge me, which doesn't sound right. It's going to be the vendors. And is it going to be a percentage or is it going to be fixed or both percentage and fixed? So in this case, commission percentage is going to be, for example, 10% in this case. Or if I want to do it fixed, it could be like, hey, $5, $10 for every single sale. You can do that there. I'd rather use percentage, but it's up to you. Shipping cost goes to vendor. So if you want to add that cost to them, you turn this on. Tax goes to Bender. Uh, if you want to put that to them, commission after considering Bender coupons, set that to them. Commissions after consider admin coupons. So there's two types of coupons. Each vendor can set up their coupons and you also as, a, as the main admin of the store can also create like general coupons for everyone, not just individual vendors. So that's why it's asking this commission sales tax. You can enable that tax and percentage. Let's continue. 
All right, next thing is the request auto approve. So for example, this is the withdrawal, the money of the withdrawal. You can order status for withdrawal, so it's processing or completed. I mean, you just want to keep that as only for completed. That's the only reason you would do a withdrawal. If not, then that. Minimum withdrawal limit, so you can say like, hey, minimum is like $10. I'm not gonna do less than that, or 100, 1,000, whatever you want. Withdrawal threshold, if you want to set that up, eight days. Withdrawal payment methods, so you have all these options available. You can enable test mode so you can do some testing. Um, the PayPal, if you want to set that up. In this case, for this purpose in the testing video, I will not set that up. Let's continue. Obviously, you can set the style of the, of the store, so the colors to your branding. In this case, we're not going to mo move those. And like I said, we can change these after, so no worries. Capabilities. So the capabilities, for example, backend access to WP admin, no, vendors won't have access to that. Submit products, yes. Publish products, yes. If you want to do like manual publishing, you can turn that off. Uh, edit live products, delete products, view orders, status updates, and view reports. So all this will be as a capability that they can do. All right, so there we go. Let's go head on over to the dashboard. So the main setup is, is done. I mean, you can get started in that sense. And this is how the dashboard looks for the admin panel and also for the vendors. So it looks super professional to have this installed and offer this service to your vendors because it's a professional looking dashboard. You got all the graphics right here. So for example, sales, commissions, sold and received. And you got all these graphics available when they start selling. Before we head on over there to show you how a vendor registers and what they're going to look like. Let's head on over here to settings really quickly and the vendor registration. Here on the vendor registration, you can select what it's actually like force that you need. They need to sign in. For example, the registration settings hide, become a vendor, require approval. This means, for example, in WooCommerce, when you want to uh, log in or register in for the, the cart in the bottom, it's going to say register as a vendor required approval so it's like it's not default approved you gotta do a requirement email verifications i am not going to enable that right now but that is highly recommended because you don't want spammers and so right now for this purpose i won't do it register form fields these are all the ones that they would be asking for let's just first name um store username and let's just choose that you got the registration form custom fields also and you got more advanced options right there let's save that really quickly all right and one of the things before we head over to the vendor store is for example i want to show you this really quick products we're not going to see anything because there's no products added in this page and no vendor has added products each vendor will manage their own products and their own images they won't see images from the admin images from other vendor images they will have their own only admin will have access to everything so let's head on over to the vendor registration oh whoops i want to open an incognito so in this case we're going to do a fake registration all right let's all you can remove this afterwards like as a test site this one is going to be for example sas master email that email first name eh. Uh, store name also SAS master and a password and password so let's just say someone just registered to be a vendor all right I just registered successfully registered see that registration successfully it's gonna refresh all right and I just registered as a vendor and I'm actually gonna get a startup setup how cool is that this looks super professional. So let's get to let's go. So each individual vendor is going to have to set up their own store. In this case, um, I'm going to add like just the default logo. And like I said before, this guy won't have access to any single in like image from the admin images. Each vendor will have their own images. So I'll just add this for uh, testing purposes. Let's upload it. All right, let's wait for that to load. And let's select that and the banner. These, this is all for testing purposes. Each individual vendor will have to do everything. Shop name, we can change that later. Uh, all this, addresses and all that good stuff. And like I said before, if you have the Google API, it will put the point where they put the address. Uh, shop description, best store in the world, all right? So that's what the vendor says, right? He says that's the best store. This description will be like shown when the user logs into the store and they would see that information. The PayPal for them, 
you got the bank transfer also if they want to use that <clears throat> policy tap label so you could say this is the tap label policy shipping policy no shipping because this is um, digital products refund policy no refunds cancellations no cancellations all right continue obviously you would have a vendor set that up <clears throat> A phone email and all that address for support so for example it could be different from the store address maybe you have a warehouse maybe someone else is doing the support for you and you can set that up a store SEO title so you would have to fill this out as a store to get uh, viewed and known by for example Google and Bing Yandex they'll find you easily when you have this information a Facebook setup Twitter setup you can do that right there also continue you got the social media, so they would add their links right there and it would show on the store when they uh, view that. And we're done, let's go to the dashboard. How cool is that when the vendor signs up and they get this process, it's like, whoa, that's not even WordPress, that's not WooCommerce. They're gonna think it's like a, a super professional store that took years or months to set up and thousands of dollars, when it actually, it didn't. All right, so this is how the vendor's gonna look at the, at the dashboard also. It looks like the admin one, but this is for vendors. And look at every single option they have as a vendor. They got their own media assets. They got their own articles. They have their own products, orders. They have their own coupons, individual coupons for their own store. Customers, refunds, add to my store, settings, payments, le uh, ledger books, uh, reviews, support, followers, report, and, and log out. I'm gonna show you how a product looks like when you add one. Let's head on over. And remember, I'm a vendor right here. I'm not the admin panel. So I'm a vendor right here. And this is how they would look and I would add a brand new one and here in the vendor panel as you would for example in WooCommerce as if it were like hey this is my store this is how they would look and you could force them to fill things out and you can remove things that you don't want them to view so for example you don't want them to use categories well you can remove categories in this case so let's add the image let's just grab this one because I'm not gonna take time uploading again at this one again to gallery simple product barrel product root product or external affiliate products simple product and it's gonna be virtual and in this case it's gonna be um, let's just say let's just call it software and the price for this normally normally is $100 but the sale price is $49 so you can set that up short description software for sale and just whatever it does right long description we got the category set up, tags. Tags are really important. I won't fill that out right now. Inventory, so they get SQ, manage stock. So for example, there's only 10 of these. Um, allow back orders, do not allow, or allow, or, or allow. Um, sold individually. Attributes, so you can add attributes right here. You got linked products for upsells and cross sales. Product policies, um, remember we set that up when we set up the store? Well, maybe you have a uh, like a general policy, but let's just say you uploaded a, a product that's like on sale. This is like a super big sale. Well, this one won't have refunds and you can move this as you want, or this one will have 30 day money back guarantee. So you can individually uh, change these afterwards. And then you got the advanced menu order, purchase note for this order. All right, so let's submit this one. And there we go. This product has been submitted. So now this person has its own product view right here. Let's wait for that to process. There we go. Remember we said it's 149 pounds is the sale price. No categories because I haven't added any categories. But if there would, you can see that right there. So this is a really nice look of how it's going to look for the vendor. You can remove these and add as you want. So for example, maybe you don't want the user to create coupons. You can disable it in the admin. All right, let's go back to over here. Now, this is the admin panel. And remember, I told you before, um, there's no products here, but let's refresh it here in the products. And I can actually click again on products. And now I can see what that vendor added. So the name of this, that's image, it's a software. It's published, it's, it's, there's 10 in stock. This is a price category, the information of the type, the views, the date, the store. In this case, this is a store, SAS Master and we can quick edit that we can view it we can mark it as featured if it's something important or they paid extra to feature it we got the edit ar archive it and delete it and this is a store link 
So for example, let's check out what this product looks like. So let's click on right here on view. Let's open it in the new tab. Let's wait for that to load. And this is the product. Obviously we can remove this, the sidebar, or we can add like, for example, feature products. And I'll show you how to add that in a bit. So for example, this is the main image. You can add it to card. There's 10 in stock. Um, you can ask questions with this. You can disable that if you want. The rating for the store, obviously in the ratings, category, description. Remember, we just put software for sales, something really simple. You got the reviews, more offers, policy, inquiries right there. Super easy to do, super easy to set up. Now, let me show you how to set up the widgets right here so we can get rid of that. So for example, if we go to widgets, we have to go to appearance and widgets and here in widgets you have these two areas we got the vendor store sidebar and the store list sidebar so along with wcfm what you're going to get is new widgets so for example we got the store list categories store list um, location filters radio filters uh, store categories featured products for example if i add oops feature products if i added to vendor store sidebar right here let's add that widget let's go back again Let's add it to the over here and let's add it to the main sidebar. So we added that one to all of these and so we could change these right here. Uh, we could get rid of these sidebars. For example, you can see some footers that look really ugly right now. Just get rid of them right here. Those are basic things you have to set, you know, if you are using WordPress. All right. So now we added all of those and you, now it's going to change. So you can see all that information that's added right there. All right, if we head on over back to settings, you're gonna see all the settings that we looked through when we started, the setup plus many more. You can enable and disable things. So for example, you got the modules. Maybe you wanna remove or add some modules. So for example, store coupons, you wanna remove coupons for the users. Media, vendor ledgers, inquiry, setups, and all that good stuff. Geolocation, order settings. So for example, in order settings, you can disable multi-vendor checkout. Um, for example, if you have multi-benders, obviously that's the idea, and people added uh, five products from one vendor and two from other, another vendor. If you disable this, that means they have to pay each vendor individually. But if you have it like that, they can pay both at the same time. So that's a pretty cool option to have. So in my recommendation, don't disable it unless you have a reason for it. Commission settings, we can change it again. Withdrawal settings, payment settings, shipping settings, refund settings. Review, vendor registration, we saw that already. The store style, it's just the colors. Dashboard style, also the colors. Um, we can change those. Dashboard page, uh, the chat box. If you want to enable the chat box, you have two options, Firebase and TalkJS. You'd have to open up account and you set up, you put the, AP, the ID and the secret to enable it. So it's pretty cool. Notifications manager, in this case, everything is like, like on, but you can remove it. So for example, hey, I don't want a notification for a new follower. I mean, that's just too much or for other things. You just disable that. Email settings, obviously you change the emails for different things, depending if you have more people in your team, you have different settings. Maybe support is one email and the sales is another one. Inquiry settings, product type, see categories, category attributes, uh, something else that you might want to see. The store hours, you could change that. The store badges, you can add store badges right here. So for example, a badge for people who sold 100 products and over. So you have a store badge for them. You can add it right there. You got the store verification badge right here. So you can see that. <coughs> the identification types. So identify name, um, you get a national ID. You ask for that, the business card, a passport, driver's license, uh, general. Maybe they want to do like a sign in for Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, something like that to actually verify them and make sure they're actually real people to give them that verification badge. You have all that available. Next thing we have over here, obviously you got the general view of everything. So coupons, they haven't been added any. In this case, you'd have like the general coupons and the vendor coupons available. You got the withdrawal options right here. You got articles, the media. In this case, media, you would be able to see the media from every single vendor, not just yours but vendors will only be able to see their own media. So as you can see, it's like a super, super uh, complete vendor store that you can create with this plugin. So it's super recommended if you wanna have a site where you have vendors come in and sell for you. Now, after you've set this all up, obviously in your builder, you would set up like the, the WooCommerce products, how they're gonna be viewed, how you want them to log in, 
obviously this is not how you want your menu to be to be looking like you would have to set that up over here in settings so for example in appearance you would make your own menu look the way that you want to so at the end of the day like i said this is just an example and what i actually showed you also is just an example how it would look like but you would be able to customize all this to your liking move it around change the widgets here on the left Add the products at an example if 10 instead of 10 products or 20 just view 10 uh, view the top five products and all that you would do in your theme so in this case i haven't created any mean in any menu so i would create that i'm just showing you this really quickly so you know what you have to do and you add a primary menu save that menu and you would add what you want right here so for example all these add them to the menu Maybe you want to create a custom link right here. So I would use a hashtag and say store. Oh, don't like uh, store, add to menu. All right, I would add that right there. And I would add these as a, a subcategory. So save that. Just want to show you really quick. I think this is helpful <clears throat> for all you guys. So let me open the link. And now you're going to see the menu changed once it loads all right so now we have store we hover over it and we have this now so instead of having all the links up there that would change really easily and really fast and like i said you have to build your own page for store and that's just completely apart from what wcfm marketplace does there you go guys i hope i covered the most parts of this uh, plugin i think it's super interesting super recommended for anyone who, who wants vendors to sell for you because i know many people have like the idea of a great niche that hasn't been attacked or there's a need for it and just say hey you know what no one's selling in uh, like i don't know like ninja turtle toys right and you create a store just for that and you know there's people who want to sell those products so maybe you don't have the product but you create the store for those guys so you could do that with this plugin so there you go guys, I hope you liked this video, it was a super long video I think, but um, I hope you got an idea of what capabilities you have this and it's a super professional store that you can create. The link will be in the description, like I said before, it's an affiliate link, it won't cost you a single cent more to buy from that link, but it helps me out make this video for you guys. And if I have some updates that I might want to uh, let you guys know, I will add them in the comments and in the description. Just in case something new comes up, if a new update comes up that I think is really cool, you will see that there. Thank you for watching. My name is George and this is Sassamaxer. I'll see you guys later.